viewers, welcome to Punchline Africa TV broadcasting all the way from Nairobi, the Republic of Kenya. We are delighted this afternoon to have none and than African sons. The first son on the floor is from the Republic of Zimbabwe, the only independent member of parliament in the Zimbabwe parliament. He won his seat not convincingly, but beyond majority. He's a man of many trades. Trade is a, a footballer, is a rugby player, is a trainer. The man I have in the studio right now will be talking live from here in Nairobi, telling us the experiences, Zimbabwe and the way forward. What can Africa do? As you know, this show, Matanga Africa Perspective, we seek to help Africa. <coughs> what ails Africa? What kills Africa? What has dented our continent, despite the fact that we have resources? Are we too corrupt? Are we bewitched? I don't want to hesitate to use Professor Pierre Lumumba, that in Africa we support our own thieves. And they are here. They are in the African continent. There are very many of them. They steal resources. They sell resources. This honorable member of parliament, Temba Mus Temba Musidi Muliswa. Muliswa. His man, the man himself is here. Zimbabweans watching wherever you are. Bring in your views. Tell us Talk to us. Use Twitter handle. Talk to us. Our programs are on all platforms. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I want to ask him all questions. But before I do that, I just want to give him a chance to speak, to test the microphones. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to be on the Matanga show, a man that I've known for a long time in Zimbabwe in Africa who has been a Pan-Africanist of excellency. It's great to be in Nairobi live here talking about our situation in Zimbabwe, which touches Africa, which touches the world and so forth. You know, none other than the only you know, free mind saw uh, the independent member of parliament, uh, myself, Temba Mliswa. Thank you very much for this invitation. Thank you very much, Honorable Member of Parliament, for not on Temba. You won this seat independently. It means the people of Norton have respect for you. And you accepted the elections were conducted. The first question goes, why is it difficult in Africa for us to accept a defeat when we are defeated? Why is there a pull and a push Yet you, independently, your votes were verified. The Supreme Court announced its verdict. And you pushed, you moved on and said Zimbabwe moves on. The rest, MDC, are still making argument. Why? I think the first thing we must understand, uh, elections world over, I never fear even in America. I mean, Africa even worse because of the third hand that's always involved in doing what we're doing. We are controlled because the resources that we have are always given to people who benefit who are not Africans. You've got the Chinese right now in Zimbabwe who are there. So they're interested in the governance. You've got the Western world coming through and so forth. So they're not really for the welfare of the people, but the resources that Zimbabwe has. And when you're having elections, they want to know that whoever wins will they also be able to have access to those resources so that they exploit our people, they manipulate people, they remain in control and dictate with the monies that we have. So that noise comes through and every party has its affiliation, its policies, which either are east or west. And in that, the very governments that belong to the east and west are likely to support. The Zimbabwean election, for the first time, uh, pre-Mugabe, was very fair. Everybody talks about free, fair, and credible. Nobody complained. 
about it. All parties signed a code of conduct to the Zimbabwe Electric Commission that we're ready to go because it's like going to court with your wife. <coughs> you sign a marriage certificate. Yes. You know, if she signs it, she has to also abide to the fact that she's your wife and the man must equally love. Yes. <laughs> and, 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 but if you are not happy, then you then do the necessary. But that was signed. And uh, then after the election, we had the uh, problems which were the protests, uh, violence which happened, people killed, unfortunately the innocent people, looting which was happening and so forth. But before that the Constitutional Court had also ruled because part of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission also talks about if you are a grieved party, you have a right to challenge that through the Constitutional Court, which ruled that uh, Comrade Emerson Dabuzungangagwa had emerged as the winner. And, uh, of course, Chamisa, the president of the, uh, of the MDC, Nelson Advocate, was of a different view altogether despite going to the court. His main bone of contention, really, amongst everything else in the national dialogue, which is there, is that he wants to have a one-to-one -one with the president. I've not seen him not uh, refer to the president as the president of the Republic of Zimbabwe. He does. But he also feels democratically he has a right to also meet the president. Democratically, he has a right to say no, but the majority will always have their way and the minority will have their say. So he's having his say. So it's also important moving forward that we have this dialogue, which must be a continuous process. In Norton, it was a different thing altogether. I got 17,000 votes near mm. MDC, had about 7,000 votes, and ZANU PF, which was presented, <laughs> represented by the advisor to the president, Honorable Chris Mchanga, had 4,000. So, you know, when you beat them and thump them with such margins, they cannot go to any court. Mm. But you must understand that the processes which are used, the way people campaign is different altogether. But one thing that you must give credit to is that there wasn't much violence and intimidation before the election, which is the most important Can't, yes. uh, period. The missing the thing pre, uh, uh, the, in, during the Mugabe times. Yes. Yes, this one was was peaceful. I was among what some of those watching from another area. And uh, you have brought up very serious points. I want to ask, and this is very serious for African democracy we are nurturing. Surely, when you went to this election, did you have two notes? Two notes. One letter saying defeating, and another one saying, because what is killing Africa, uh, Honorable Temba, people go in this election with one letter, I have to win. Did you have winning speech and losing speech? You see, I'm you just asking for the viewer, because the viewer, Anthony Dales Choco, is your beloved viewer all the way from, I don't know, from Harare, he's saying, teach them how to do politics. He says, you did very well. And they said, hi, brother Temba, Musiwa. teach them, brother, tell them, brother, good job. He says, you did a good job at that time. Did you have to? No. If you had lost, what would you say? No, what is important about <laughs> an election, it's like sport. Yes. You have a winner and a loser. And uh, the winner must be magnum, mag, magnanimous yes. and winning too and congratulate the loser yes. and want to work with the loser too for the good of the country. The loser too must also be able to accept defeat for the good of the country because there is a second chance. You see, and what you do is as the loser, you start working towards the next uh, election. election. Immediately. Yes. At the same time, you also, because what we need in Zimbabwe is got the ruling party is NPF. No yes. one questions that. Because in parliament, they've got two thirds majority. Yes. And nothing is questioned. But you've got the opposition, so MDC led by advocate Nelson Chamisa, which again, I think, is the government in waiting. But it must also prove to be the government in waiting by interrogating the policies and implementation mm -hmm. that ZANU PF has. Mm -hmm. Are they implementing? If they're not, they're not implementing. They must they be able to say, vote us next time so that we are there. I think we're at that juncture for us to argue about a process that we know will come again. Yes. I'd rather let effort and energy be put into preparing for the next the election than fighting when when there is one point you raise and that is good. I hope politicians in Kenya, especially those PLO Mumba talks to every day, hear this. The guy went in an election with determined mind. If he loses, he will continue to prepare for next time. Here in East Africa, we have a different version. Can I shock you? Yes. We, we go with enough, we go with one paper. Of one. If you ask Bessie in Uganda, he doesn't write defeated speech. 
He had never written. If you ask him seven in Uganda, he doesn't write two speeches. In the whole of Africa, and these are the things you are teaching, you are talking to, to the younger generation you came to talk to in Nairobi. We have that problem in Africa. Do you think there is need for change of our electoral systems? Look at the South African electoral system. The election ended, people went, people are laughing, they are eating hamburger together. There is no violence on the streets of South Africa. Opos north of Limpopo, Malawi. My God, they are still tearing sharks, beating each other. You saw the, the opposition wants something. There is this clamor for change. Whoever loses goes to the younger generation. Tells them, change. We want to change. Are you happy as an African? No. To see this type of things where whoever loses automatically triggers the younger generation to say, come out in big numbers. We now want to lose even Musilwa. We don't want him. He has joined the parliament we didn't want. Ban it. In Gabon, we banned it. Jinping banned the whole parliament, killed 400 people, banned the Supreme Court. Are we having an Africa which is going that route? This is why we need to talk about a generational consensus, about young people coming in. And the role of the young people in politics now, is it to be used to be violent or is for you to dictate your future? The day we have young people realize that they are the power, they are the base, they are the foundation for politics, then we have changed. Because I believe that young people are suffering the most. At the same time, they cannot continue to be used for violence. They cannot be continue to be used for things which do not address their concerns. They're unemployed, they're going to school, their parents are still looking after them. So there needs to be a mindset and this is where I'm grateful to Piola Lumumba's foundation which I came for today to talk about the young people in the governance of their countries, how they must get involved. Because each generation, whether you like it or not, wants to take part. But it is also the money factor. The young people don't have money to get into politics. So those generations which are much older have been able to steal enough money from governments to keep it on the side, to keep it offshore. When it comes to election, they stay in power due to corruption at the end of the day. But there's something that you cannot beat. That is numbers. Numbers of the youth demographically are yes. the only ones because if you look at him seven, in Africa, if yes. you look at him seven, Munanga, Guasi, yes. Ramaphosa, all the revolutionary cadres, when they were young, they fought for what was good. So the young people must not be despaired. They fought for change. Mugabe fought for change to whether he's there or not when he was young. Mandela, when he was young, he fought for change. Julius Nyerere fought for change. Okay. Arab Moyo fought for change of the system which was there. Mm. They were fighting the system. Yes. And I think we must fight the system more than persons. A system which is corrupt, a system which is making people suffer, which is not improving the welfare of the people. A system which again does not allow the country to be a sovereign nation. And each time we have a headquarters that we report to which is not an African headquarter or which is not a headquarter of that country. We have masters who are there. At the end of the day, we dance to the tune of the masters. When will Africa become the giant? It's always known as the sleeping giant. Surely there's a time when the sleeping giant must, must wake, wake up. up. And I challenge the youth of Africa exactly. to be the ones. In fact, it's not the sleeping giant working. It is the youth who are sleeping. <laughs> who are the giant to now wake up and dictate their future and have an obligation to be able to be in the corridors of power. Thank you very much, Honorable MP. We want to turn on. That's very, I think, I hope Africans, many, very many people listening to you are saying, uh, Chikeru Chinedu, Temba Musira was a wise man. <laughs> was a wise man to do what you did in Zimbabwe. You defeated them and he loves the way you do your things. Another person is saying, Tonga Kachatameza is watching you. I am with Temba. All the, all the way. There are many, many messages. We've gone, we have hit high. You, you, you are working right now. Let me bring you home. Health workers are on strike, boss. What are you doing about the economy? The economy, the economy of, of Zimbabwe. Look, sometime... You and me, we had tea in Sheraton. I told you, 
There is one thing you can do about the economy of Zimbabwe. Holistic approach. You remember that thing? I remember. I wrote very well. A very good article. Now, Zimbabweans, you owe me a lot. You especially, you. You owe me a lot. I remember you used to tell Zimbabweans the truth. A holistic them. approach. A holistic approach in the sense that you need to change. When we took over government in Kampala, we found Idi Amin had taken everything, including human beings. He had eaten them. <laughs> Idi Amin eats human beings. He used to eat tongues of Professor Lumumba and the rest. They, they can now Professor Lumumba's tongue would have been roasted. <laughs> because he's one of the cleverest people who, running around Africa. He would be annoyed with him. Mm -hmm. So we found on the skeletons. I was a younger man at the age of 18, 19. Obote put us in train, training to return the economy. I told you Zimbabweans, until you do a holistic approach on the economy of Zimbabwe, you, you'll go nowhere. Do you know what you do? You always export your flowers and the bank the money where? You've you bank the money in Europe. You don't return medicines. You don't return pharmaceuticals. You are not returning textbooks. Change the policy. And this policy is killing Munagawa. It has killed Mugabe. It will kill everybody. Until you today take this message from me. I'm 64 years old. 64. Munagawa beats me by 10 years. That means I've lived longer. I've eaten the grain. The granaries of Africa, very many of them. And I'm in the sunset going area. Take this from me. If you don't do a holistic approach, that economy is not textbook economy. If you do it the way you are doing it, the way you are going to have nurses coming, others coming, you have seen now nurses threatening to strike, you have seen that. What do you want us, tell us about the economy? What do you want the government of Zimbabwe, together with yourself, how do you want the economy? You have, the, you have hit the nail on the head, uh, Dr. Matsanga, and you have been in Zimbabwe. We have shared a number of platforms talking about what is important for our people. I remember you supporting the government for doing the right things, and when you started criticizing them for the wrong that they were doing, giving the adverse, they see you as an enemy. That is the other problem that we have in Africa, that we always think that the person who tells you the truth is an enemy of the state, yet the real friend is the one who tells you the truth. You see PLO, Professor PLO Lumumba, what he has done. Thanks to social media, he has been able to educate people, and I think people are catching on to the fact that his messages are about building a country. The nurses are going on strike. The teachers, too, have just sent a warning that they're going on strike. The economy is not good. Dr. Matanga, how can you trust your economy to be run by foreigners when the resources are in the hands of the foreigners? When they make money, they will not put anything back into the country. There is no single Zimbabwean who has a platinum concession. All platinum concessions are given to foreigners. All the good gold concessions are given to foreigners. So what they do is they come, they exploit, they plunder, and they take money outside. So if you are not producing and getting retention of foreign currency in the country, you then end up going with a begging ball. Okay. And the holistic approach is an approach which you're talking about, which looks at every sector empowering your people. And when you empower your people, you cannot have an economy where exports are not going along with the imports. The imports bill is higher than the export bill. Yet Zimbabwe generates an income of $12.4 billion of gold. Where does it go to? Tobacco, 1.4 billion. Where does it go to? It goes to the non-productive sector, which means at the end of the day, we will continue to suffer. And then you need to do an audit too on the companies which are in Zimbabwe, whether they are really paying tax or not. The other issue, Dr. Matsanga, which you must understand is that unity is critical. The biggest impediment in Zimbabwe is unity. There is no one who put money in a country where you are fighting about who won and so forth. That's the reason why President Emerson Mnangagwa and Nelson Chamisa have got to talk for the good of the people at the end of the day. I ask for the office of the president, not Emerson Mnangagwa as a person, to accommodate Chamisa. I also ask the office of the president of the MDC Alliance 
to talk to the president's office, not as individuals. The day that they separate their offices mm. from the offices of public uh, 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 interest, mm. then we will now have people talking along that. Like yes. you said, the problems are the dispute of elections where yes. people are watching yes. and one puts in money, but the foreigners take advantage of that. Yes. They come in and plunder all your you, 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 you come to a real point, the way which I always, I am here, I'm hated by France. And I want to tell you frankly that France, I am not bothered. I don't need your passport. Neither do I need to visit you. You visit me in Africa. Oh, this is where I live. Because where I live also is bigger than France. There are no yellow vests on the streets. They are, they are in Paris. One of the problems, the, these foreign powers, you talk of foreigners taking everything out of us. The beneficiaries of our chaos on the continent are not ourselves, no. are foreigners. I agree with you. Today, we have very many people. And I want to bring you to these waters. Because the people in Zimbabwe would like to know. The question of people going outside their countries. And then starting to say, we must fight the regime. Especially Professor Moyo, Jonathan Moyo, Kasukwere, and the other people. You have chosen, you have also disagreed with Zanu PF before, but you have never gone to the bush. <laughs> you have stayed in Zimbabwe. Most of us who have gone to the bush, I was in the bush for 23 years. You know very well, when I came to Zimbabwe, I was in the bush. I know how the bush is. Until we sorted out and I shook hands with him seven, we seized the fire. Do you agree that the only way, as you have said, of saving Zimbabwe, is Zimbabweans to drop all other things and seek a peaceful, wider discussion on their way forward. There is no two ways about that. It does not also require a foreigner to come and teach us how to talk to each other. We've got people, we've got churches, we've got leaders, we've got traditional leaders, we've got everybody who is important in bringing about the peace. If we can not talk to each other, it talks about our political immaturity. It talks about how deep our problem is. Yet there's nothing. If Mugabe and Changrai could talk to each other in the end for the interest of the nation, what stops President Emerson Mnangagwa and the leader of opposition advocate Nelson Chamisa from talking to each other about this? What you must do is create a framework which at the end of the day the mediator is somebody who they agree on but not from outside but from inside after that we then have an understanding because from what i hear and which i think is right and i keep saying this is that the president is continuing governing which is fine at the same time, there is the aspect of those who are outside Zimbabwe. Professor Moyo was part of the Mugabe regime, and he is also facing allegations of having been corrupt, which he must answer to. So at times, don't hate a country because you also uh, have allegations. Yes. I was arrested, Dr. Matsanga, over 70 times, and I quit 70 saw. times. You know that. I know. I, I never ran the country. Yes. I never ran away from the country because I believed I was innocent at the end of the yes. day. And this was when the regime was tough. Yes. But I still went through that. So what is important is that we also don't want a situation where people who are in power steal resources when they are said to be corrupt, they run away and they start attacking the country from outside. outside. Professor Moyo must come to Zimbabwe, must also face the justice yes. like anybody else in a proper manner. So in short, don't go too far. In short, this guy is a fugitive. You've got to understand that. Yes, he's running. running. Professor Moyo is all the time on t Twitter. And uh, you, you were a politician who was elected with 17,000 votes plus 4,000 plus 7. That's not any consequence. You have a right to stand and say, why should Professor Jonathan Moyo be in a comfort and a right to Twitter to incite the Zimbabweans to pick guns? He's writing every day. This morning he has just written. And this man is known where he is. I don't want to lie the, to the you. Problem is the who, who, why you are, are you Zimbabweans? I'm now with you. You are a lawmaker. You should go back to parliament. Seek extradition of Mr. Moyo. Seek. You are a member of parliament. You are representing people. Change the law. And extradite Moyo. Ask Sadak. East African community, 
eager that when you see this negative force, bring him. You are not doing it as Zimbabweans. And you see now all of us are helpless. And then something is coming on our streets which will kill your employment, which will kill your values, your property. There are people there. The foreign forces against you. And I'm telling you now today, brother, if people have already told you, there are many. There is Johnny Carson's, there is Jeffrey Smith, there is Kofi Annan Foundation. I'm naming for you. There is the French intelligence, DSGE. It is working for against you. Again, it's you and Zimbabwean who fought, who went to prison so many times in order to get this freedom, even to talk today. But what do you say about it? We must also understand one thing, Dr. Matsanga, that we cannot allow countries to be used as safe havens for criminals. Yes. If any minister steals in Kenya and he has allegations and is in Zimbabwe, the government of Zimbabwe must ensure that that person is extradited back to Kenya and faces the full wrath of the law. Thank you. That is important. So if Professor Jonathan Moore is in Kenya or is in any other country, why are the leaders allowing him to be there and not go back to ensure that he faces justice at the end of the day? You could see that WikiLeaks guy who was uh, staying in and so forth. Yes, and, in one um, embassy. In one embassy. Yes. They ended up getting him out. Yes. Okay. <laughs> These were European <laughs> countries. So why can't Jonathan will be fished out yes. and be found in Zimbabwe and face the full wrath of the law because that's the governance that we want. So it is a warning to African countries that for as long as you become safe heavens of criminals and ministers and politicians who have plundered from the thing, it will not go anywhere. One of the critical points which you bring up, which we need to talk about at the end of the day, is the interference of foreign forces coming into Zimbabwe. Exactly. You see, you've got to understand that the country must always be alert. The security must be on top of the situation. But your biggest security is your people being happy. Yes. When your people are happy, the then report. there is then no threat to security. Exactly. But if they are unhappy, there is a threat to security. And the reason why Zimbabwe is in the situation it is in, we need a government of national reconstruction, not national unit, not an inclusive government where the president is still the president in Mnangagwa, but he chooses people that will rebuild this country. For a long time, Africans suffer because a leader has been in power for a long time. Mugabe was in power over 30 years. Okay, 36 years, can 37 years. Me, and to you, me, how you do you they... the Kenyan version? To me, let, yes. me, let me come to that. To <laughs> me, Mugabe I'm just left joking. a country which is mm. totally destroyed. Mm. And it is important for Nangagwa to find a team, which is not only a ZANIPF team, but a team of Zimbabwe nationals across the world who are able to do that. The Kenyan scenario, the reason why I, I've come to Kenya, and I thank Professor Lumumba for inviting me, is to also probably carry with me some Kenyan spirit which when I arrive in Zimbabwe, yes. the opposition can talk yes. like it happened yes. here. So I'm hoping but that Munagakwa, spirit will follow me. If Munagakwa says, uh, there's somebody from Mashingo saying, he's watching you from Mashingo. So great to see Honorable Temba in your studios. Mashingo constituency in Zimbabwe is tuned. Yes. <laughs> and you know Mashingo Yes, Mashingo, that's where the politics yes. is. Yes, <laughs> the hot bed of the well, politics. That's of, the politics, civilization. Okay. You, Emerson Munagagwa says, he can't use a grader to, to carry. You saw his statement, he said, he cannot go and carry Chamisa and bring him by force to talk. He opened up what we call party talks. I think you are one of the, the political party. Yes, actors. that all people were supposed to come, like every country in Uganda. Yes, we have the same political. Basically, is, 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 is trying to avoid it, but other parties have gone. So, if you look at across Africa, and I want you to take this across Africa, all opposition parties are having the same common de denominator. Reject, call upon the masses to come to the streets. In Uganda, where I'm born, we are now in an explosive mood. Bessie J and uh, Bob Wine, the singer man, the younger man of 36, is when he comes to the city, the city stands still. We have a problem. In Malawi, we have the same mm -hmm. problem. In Kenya, we solved it. Mm -hmm. How we solved it? 
Pierre Mumba will tell you. But we did tactics, miracles. Because after elections in Kenya, everybody took off the shirt and went to the streets. Said, now you come. We saw that was a danger. In Zimbabwe, there is, and nobody should lie to you, there is a very serious force outside and surrounding you that wants a regime change. Given that, what can you say? The president says he has called Chamisa. Chamisa has refused to come. All right? To come to table. Chamisa has given why he did not come to table. The election was finished. The Supreme Court ruled. Once the Supreme Court of the country rules, there is no other place you can go. What do you suggest? You will pick from Kenya and go with it. That has can help Emerson Munagawa help the rest of the people to come to the table. The president has done well in calling for a national political actors dialogue. Are you with me? But one of the issues which I've also spoken about, uh, Dr. Matsanga, is that the political actors dialogue has got politicians too who are not powerful, who did not get a lot of votes. That's why Chamisa says it's, it's a non-event because none of them have got members of parliament in parliament. I'm a member of parliament, I'm independent. I've even beaten most of them. In fact, if you look at my votes in, compared to presidential, I'm probably number five as an MP. Yes. <laughs> okay, Ngab, uh, Emerson Nangagwa, number one, Chamisa, number two, there is Kupe, and then uh, there is uh, uh, somebody, and I'm number five. And yet I won in a constituency. So all those other political actors don't have the numbers. That's why Chamisa Some can never say, won a seat. They never even got even the vote. Are they briefcase parties? That is the truth. We yeah. have yeah, but this, yeah. In the this are now, you see this television parties. does not take prisoners. Yes, that is yes. now let's be honest. Those yes. are briefcase parties. parties yes. Which now make Chamisa say no, I cannot sit with those briefcase parties, President. The biggest let's look at the political parties with members in parliament. That's how you determine the strength of the party. Are you with me? They are the ones who must be sitting because they got into an election, they spoke about it. And Chamisa is right in saying that he wants to meet the president on his own. It is his democratic right, Dr. Matsanga. understand this. And there is no reason why the president, who is kind, who is a reformist, who is a democrat, cannot allow that to happen. Because we are running away from the Mugabe era to the new dispensation. And in the new dispensation, what stops the president from meeting Chamisa, having a cup of tea, and so forth, just like he meets everybody else who is not Chamisa. Are you with me? So okay. for as long as M for example, yeah, you, you have a point there. For example, can we offer Chamisa as the High Commissioner for ICT in the Africa Union? You see, I don't. No, no, wait, wait. I I am one of the the worst negotiators. Look at it, my eyes, left eye. I'm a terrible negotiator. We can create a post in the African Union. Is a young man who knows ICT. Can he be a high commission, an ambassador for African Union? Because part of the problem that Zimbabwe cannot stabilize is his presence, his idol. He's not in the parliament like you. What we got here is Raila was idol. And Raila had nothing to do here. He was causing trouble here. We got him to walk in Africa and speak like an African. My age tells me to tell Monagago and tell you exactly what you should do about Zimbabwe. Because Zimbabwe is not yours. It's ours. We liberated it. Yes, Remember that. We liberated Zimbabwe. We paid the taxes to liberate Zimbabwe. But Dr. Therefore, can we get, you know, take this to Chamisa. That do you want to become the ambassador, the high ambassador of AU for ICT. To create ICT installations in Africa. Leave Monagagua space. Because the constitutional court has ruled. The constitutional court ruled. Analysis is not a Zimbabwean, is half a Muzungu and a half. I am just asking. The good question you are asking is a noble one. I cannot be Chamis spokesperson, but, no, but know, I'll convey the message yes, to him. Yes, Matsanga is ready. In fact, to what to be good for him to come for an interview here? Yes, so no, not even an interview. I am. Look at my eyes. Yes. At my age of sixty-four, I talk African. As, a, as a member of parliament, I will send that message because it's a good message which proceeds for peace. Look, Raira was causing that but, problem but here. Matanga. That that people. Raira was blocked. Was burning this town. 
But what I want to ask you, Dr. Matsanga, is that you have a family meeting yes. in, in a cultural village. And before you have a meeting, one of the person who's part of that meeting, your son, comes to you and said, eh, Father, before you preside over this meeting, I've got one or two things to say to you. Are you not supposed to also listen to him? This is the other issue, because what Chamisa is saying is that I have something to talk about with the president on a one-to-one. -one. And that is where the issue is, and I don't see any reason why they cannot talk about it. Then other things can come after that. Yes. That's, that's what he's asking for. Yeah. Now, now the problem is another person from uh, the Mashingo says Nelson Chamisa is under the payroll of George Soros. He doesn't mean well for Zimbabwe and Africa at large. Most of these African opposition leaders, apart from you, who is independent, they are on George Soros' payroll. George Soros pays them to overthrow governments. And uh, Chamisa looks like he's part of it. Take this message that African leaders, men who grew before you, are watching you. We don't want Zimbabwe to become another Afghanistan. We don't want. Nobody wants in Africa. Germany, we, we love you so much. Especially me. You know my heart. You know it. For, for, since 2000, you have seen me in Harare fighting for this country. Please, why don't you take a message? We take it. Uh -huh. We shall look for ways... Chamisa can have time to prepare his party. I'll take, I'll take that message, Dr. Matsanga. But one of the issues, doctor, that we must talk about, which is progressive for Africa, which is af affecting Africa politics, is that what has George Soros got to do with the corruption in Zimbabwe? Uh -huh. What has George Soros got to do with the corruption in the African say, countries? Say. Okay. And to me, even the sanctions in Zimbabwe, what I'm saying at the end of this, Rhodesia became a powerful economy because of the sanctions. The pipeline was built. The Sebo Chemical Fertilizer Company was built. They had vast sanction measures which they put in place. What has happened to the diamonds revenue generated in Zimbabwe, the gold generated? So to me, we must also try and take a good look at ourselves. And that's the reason why I'm happy to be on this show, because you speak to Africa at large. We must also take responsibility for the corruption which is happening, which is making people suffer Thank today. You. Doctors are not working, as yes. you said. Nurses yes. are not working. Teachers yes. are not working. Are you saying that we <laughs> don't have enough money in Zimbabwe with the resources that we have? It's because there are people who are corrupt, who are still in government. Okay, who are serving their personal interests, not the interests of the people. And the day that we are able to put our house in order, shall we attract good investment? And dealers are the ones who are coming to take resources in Africa. It's not the big conglomerates at the end of the day. So we know the war and the cancer in Africa is now corruption. This is why PLO Lumumba, as professor talks about that. That's why we are spearheading the fight on corruption because a generation must come in which does not steal, which fears God, which will put back into his community what belongs to the community. Thank you very much. Honorable Temba is out. I have poked him. He's out now. It's true. I was coming to corruption. Part of what is killing Zimbabwe is corruption. Totally, totally. You have ministers who are sitting in cabinet who have and are still in it. And then I'll name them and shame them. Yes. The minister, Winston Chitando, was the Mimosa chief executive officer, yes. executive chairman. He has a forensic audit from Wange. Yes. And I'm talking about facts. A forensic audit which implicates him in $111 million, which he presided over as chairman. He is there. What is he doing? He has signed deals over $15 billion in mining. But yet no company has ever advanced even a dollar. That is one. What, I, what, I, so what is the point of those deals when they are not benefiting the people? He did, he got the he has a report yes. where you have pensioners who are suffering in the country, but their investment has been taken away by ministers. You've got minister... Uh, uh, Honorable Priscam Fumira, who is the Minister of Tourism and Environment, whom Mugabe fired as Minister of Labor and Social Welfare, which is the biggest, which presides... That's the number two. Fund. He's a thief. Are you with me? Yeah, here yeah, in the Kenya, we call them thieves. So to and me, we tell them the uh, thieves. and to me, there is no hiding because the forensic audits clearly talk to them. But 
How then can you be working with thieves and expect money to come in? So it is important that the president walks the talk on corruption. He fires people who are corrupt because no one will put money in. We support the president. We protect the president. And we shall not fear in telling him like we used to do in the Mugabe days where we were quiet. Thank you. If this minister is stealing... Let him be investigated. Right now, Zimbabwe has gone to AFCON. $750,000 was diverted to the finance of the Zimbabwe Football Association's account. And the players are suffering. They were supposed not to play. And they are going to play. And they are going to the, play. The, the so you've got... Fantastic. Is so it today? Egypt, yes. They are playing Egypt. Look at and that. yet, 500000 was raised by the president. Mr. President. Somebody has stolen 750000 Mr. President. Yes person is still working scot free what are the law enforcement agents doing in zimbabwe is it the cartels that have now captured the state because we cannot allow a situation where we have state capture and individuals are allowed to get away with murder the zifa finance person must be arrested for 750000 which was supposed to go to the players for afcon they then go on a flight with girlfriends, and yet no one says anything about that. So, are the girlfriends going to play the match? They are not the player. They are not called girlfriends. They are called calicos. I'll use that word. Cal yes, cal calicos. calicos. Because you leave such, you leave your best wife and the cal calicos to Egypt. In Kenya, you are saying the truth. In Kenya, here yeah, a minister carried calico to Brazil. A minister of sports left a foot a Kenya javelin floor. Who got the world medal in the javelin? You know him? The boy paid for his ticket. And the minister called Wario. We sacked him. We went to his office and the people besieged the office. Out. If this minister of, of sports has diverted the money and Zimbabweans are playing a crucial opening match, Mr. President, your people, I told you to watch. And for me, I don't fear. I tell you. This guy should go to Kirugubi. And Dr. Matsanga, you spoke about the third hand. Yes. Let me tell you, the Americans right now are holding Zimbabwe ransom. Yes. Because they want the president to be divided with the vice president, Chiwenga. You must Talk understand that. It. And there is no way that we allow any external force to divide the president and the vice president. You must work... Americans are using and they the work work. as a team. Yeah. And there is no point for Zimbabwe to keep going back to America to re-engage what? Americans are not interested in Zimbabwe. As coming. a result, we must move ahead and work with people who want to work with us. If the British are not interested, who? why should we work with them? We've got the farms, we've got the soil, we've got the climate, and let them not be a divisionist entity where they want to divide. The Vice President Chiwenga has is a comrade he fought for that country and there's no reason why he would want to do anything which would undermine the president they come a long way they work together as minister and commander defense forces they were part of the revolutionary uh, march which led Mugabe to be out of power and let me repeat this to the world at large there was no ways there was a coup in zimbabwe it is parliament that impeached the president and the president impeached uh, impeachment a, a process was stopped when Comrade Mugabe wrote a letter to Parliament. So I am a legislator. I was a legislator in that house. When I have an opportunity like this to talk to Africa and the world at large, we must understand the the process of impeachment. At no point, when the president was in power, he told that he was working with the defense forces. He had a press conference on the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation, which is the national TV. At no point did he say he was under siege. But when we were in parliament, a motion moved by Honorable Monica Mtsangwa and supported by Honorable Maridadi then who was MDC. So it was moved by ZANU-PF and seconded by MDC. He then resigned in the process. That's why I keep on saying the victory of Zimbabwe is in the hands of the people of Zimbabwe, not only ZANU PF. Okay. ZANU PF must work with everybody to ensure that we have a national agenda of reconstructing the country and let the best team come forward and do what is good for Zimbabwe. That is my prayer. And may the politicians find themselves in this time so that they humble themselves. There's humility, there's magnanimity, and they are renowned for wanting to make sure that Zimbabwe wins at the end of the day. Thank you very much. I was bringing you to the sanction as my last part. And you touched a very good point. Me, I don't like 
the way Americans do their things. I hated them for the doing bad things against Africa. European Union has removed the sanctions against Zimbabwe. They have allowed your people to travel to go and get what they can from Europe. America still insists that sanctions must be there on Zimbabwe. You know America is a big powerhouse. If America says we don't like some parts of Zimbabwe, the whole world will cough. Yesterday, the statement fixing Monagagwa to a corner. Mr. President, is a statement made to trigger a regime change. Don't accept. I agree with you. Don't hate your general. Let the general not hate you. Because what they want, once you go and indict those soldiers, the army will come and say, my friend, you are indicting our soldiers. There was a commission of inquiry in Zimbabwe. It came out with recommendations. It's upon the Zimbabwe penal court. It is not the government of America where America has actually uh, has, has America accounted for the killings in Afghanistan. In Iraq. In Iraq. In Syria. Have the, America accounted for those killings? They are the biggest human when the rights ICC, violators. I'll yes. repeat, they are the biggest human rights violators, but they want to be the referee on and the judge. On Africa. that one, we call America that. has no place in Zimbabwe, and Zimbabweans must be able to dictate their own destiny for a sovereign nation. We are very much educated. We've got Zimbabweans in America who can speak on our, on our behalf. But what we must do as Zimbabweans not be divided, not allow a third hand to come in. Even in terms of the president and Nelson Chamisa, there must be encouragement on them to discuss and talk because that is what dialogue, that is what patriotism, that's what nationalism is all about. We must think of Joshua Nkomo, our liberators, uh, Josiah Tongogara, Nikita Mangena, Dumiso Dabengwa the late, who fought yes. for the country so that we could enjoy the freedom that we have. This spirit must always be in us so that we are not able to sell our souls, our resources to people who will then be making ammunition with that. What is America's interest in Zimbabwe except to be able to put us on sanctions, sanctions which have made the ordinary person suffer, suffer. and not the targeted yes. people. So to me, it is important. You look at the Joe Biden, uh, Cory Booker ish situation in my America right now. Exactly. As much as I like Joe Biden, yes. we can't stop talking about it, Dr. Matsago. We must also look at the Americans yes. themselves. They have more They problems. still remain racist. Yes. They still remain racist. Cory Booker has a right to say, listen, you cannot call me boy yes. at this age. And Joe Biden must be able to apologize. But there are also blacks in any other. You know, you've got a mixed basket. And there are certain blacks who are standing by him. But at the end of the day, I stand by Cory Brooker in being a legislator, a congressman, saying, listen, he's an educated person. And as such, he's not one who wants to show anything. But when he feels aggrieved, there must be an apology from Joe Biden. The racism in America does not end. And it cannot be extended to Zimbabwe. We shall refuse for Zimbab that to happen. Thank you very much. Zimbabwe has given America the biggest land in Africa to build an embassy. What is that embassy doing in Zimbabwe? What information is it gathering in Zimbabwe when the people outside the embassy are dying of hunger and you are putting sanctions and the embassy, you gave them the biggest compound. It is the biggest on this African continent. We, are, we Africans watch a lot of things, but we want to bring this to a debate, to a conclusion in a good way. When you touch Zimbabwe, you touch us. Yes. Because Zimbabwe, we liberated it with our money from tax, poor tax. Yes. Poor tax we are paying here in Uganda. My father was crying of Zimbabwe with Obote all the time. We lost the first government. We brought a butcher called Amin because of crying for Zimbabwe. Kaunda cried for Zimbabwe. Nyerere cried tears in Singapore for Zimbabwe. That's why we talk about Zimbabwe. This younger generation who eat hamburger in Washington and New York and London, then they insult people. They don't want us to talk about Zimbabwe. Tell them next time you will meet the real African liberators. And then I give you time to address your constituents. 
Thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Dr. Matanga. It's been an explosive one as usual with you. There's nothing. You leave no stone unturned. And I'm sure you are in the same category as PLO Lumumba. You know, you are the people that we look up to in exposing what is happening in Africa. And it is important that we draw lessons from this. Not on constituency remains the best constituency in the country in terms of its resources that it has. If you want to come and farm, if you want to open industry, it is there for you. There's no politics in Norton. We all always say development only only in Shona we say development chete chete thank you very much for having me on this platform it's been great and I want to thank Kenya Nairobi once again for hosting enjoy me tonight again. tonight will, you will, can go out uh, in, in, in enjoying is there, is, there, is there Zimbabwean club where I can dance to there is the to best Vam Tukudzi, yes where I can dance in fact, to they, you don't need Zimbabwean <coughs> club you need me to guide you on this journey to Damascus I'll be guided when by you when we can change to Jerusalem. PLO Rumumba will hide you in a house. You might not be able to get out. Because he doesn't, he rarely dances. It's been great. I have never seen him dance. He only speaks, but he never dances. So, here we are. Thank you very much. You have made the show credible. People all over the whole world, the comments are coming. Mr. Uh, one comment that is outstanding is Rua. Nelson Rua says, why can't you, Zimbabwe, put sanctions on the United States because they have more to lose by coming to see our sunshine. They can have more to lose. That is one comment. Finally, then Thank we you very much, in. Africa. Let's remain together. Let's remain united. Let's be the the, the giant, the youth once again you are the sleeping giant may the youth of Africa wake up and take over, look at Europe you have what it takes and with people like Comrade Matsanga, Piolo Lumumba being the thing, mementos myself included, there's only one thing for Africa, it will always be that continent which everybody wants to be part of, thank you very much thank you very much, I will look out for you this evening thank you, I want to make sure that you are happy before you go back to Zimbabwe on my bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. God bless. Next is a Honorable MP from Zambia. He's called Calvin Kaunda. We shall take a break, one minute break, one. Then we change the chairs and Honorable Calvin Kaunda, he traveled all the way from Lusaka, Zambia to come and talk talk in Kenya and talk to us tell us African youth what they are doing thank you very much Zimbabweans you have heard President Emerson Munagagwa I rang your office tagged you told you listen people are not against you you brought the democracy yes at least there is freedom to speak in Zimbabwe now therefore look at the economy the economy everybody is hitting you on the economy people cannot talk eat democracy they eat food Bring it on the table. Thank you.